So flooring, let's talk flooring because that one's easy. You don't need flooring mm -hmm. lighting. So let's do a design on this and just show you. This is actually pretty easy to do if you haven't done this already. So their floor design is a little clunky. It doesn't like the shape that we have. Yeah. Well, we can do it. You just can't do it the way that it's going to look. Yeah. We have to do it backwards. <clears throat> okay, so our width, in this case... 31 and 1, or 30.1? No, because the width is this bone here. Oh, okay. I think. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. You're right. It is this one. So 31 foot 1. 31 feet, 1 inch. Okay, and then... 20 and 18. It, the width is this way. Is it? Okay, yeah. yeah. I like how you just let me do that. And then it takes the inch off for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this was 20... So we want this to be the total depth, which was... Your pictures have it. We need this depth here plus that depth. So it was 18 feet. And plus t just 20, wasn't it? Yeah. It's so like 38 something. Yeah, this 18, doesn't have to be super 18, easy. 8, so it's like 38 and a half, a yeah. little, little more. We're going to round up anyway, so we don't have to be perfectly accurate. So this was 38 feet. Okay. So now... We get to screw all that up. Yeah, so now we got... What do I got to do here? So we got to bring this one wall up. So this left wall... Basically, oh, yeah, 10, this is, this 10 gonna, feet. So this wall needs to be 20 feet, right? 18.8. Cause this is the, so this is the double entry here. Yeah. Right? This is the single. Okay. So the single, the depth here, what's the depth of the single? 20, 20 feet on the okay, inside. So yeah. 20 feet one is close enough. And then what is this wall here? So that's 11. the back wall of the single. 11. Okay. Ten feet twelve. <laughs> okay. And now Our width was 10 foot 7. It doesn't even tell me that, so I gotta go from here to there. Yeah. So for 31 feet, minus 11 is 20. Wait, no, what is this? So what is this 11 foot 1? So that's, okay, so that this is 8 foot 10. Okay, yeah, so this is 10 foot 7. Like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I need to come this way. So what is this? So this is I've got this at twenty-five feet, so it needs to be twenty. Come on. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, close enough. So it isn't, but doesn't this wall deeper than that wall? Yeah, but if you basically take this entire unit and just ah, it's the same yeah, thing. it's just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just shifted. We, yeah, because we can't do that. Okay, yeah. so th this depth here is the same as that depth there. It's just offset. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and yeah, and then the floor designer, we don't have that option. So okay. dimensionally. Square footage wise, it's the same. Yeah, and that's the key here is we just need square footage because when you lay it out in person, you're going to do it. 
Yeah, I'll do the pattern correctly. Yeah. All right, so what color do you want? Rib tracks, is that what we're doing? That's fine. Well, so what's your base color? What are you thinking? Matt Mormon style, or you got your own style? Just do so, the Matt Mormon for now. I like that, yeah. Yeah. I'll think less of you if you change it. <laughs> Two months later. I won't lie, I'm still not completely sold on the, the Swiss tracks. What's your other option? Not really. There's no other option. That's the problem. It's just... Yeah, so well, let's talk about flooring. So you have bare concrete, and it'll look great, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you just leave the concrete alone, just don't make the mistake of doing frickin' epoxy, I'm telling you. But if I spill anything on it, you see it, and it never goes away. That's the issue Not I'm anything. facing now. It's only oil. If you spill oil... Oil, anything with plumbing, PVC, any brake fluid... Well, anything with, yeah, yeah. anything with oil in it. And I mean, I'm going to be working on cars on that third base. That's going to get destroyed quickly. Mm -hmm. So, my only concern with the, um, the Swiss tracks is that I know you say it all the time. The noise factor of it, it is, it is nice that it's transportable, mm -hmm. but it isn't. The lift I have a problem with. I'm wondering how to figure that out mm -hmm. um, on the in-ground lift with height-wise, and then. Well, the end ground, the simple solution is you put the lift on top of the Swiss tracks. And just basically that force it your, up. That solves your three quarters. Yeah. It was genius. That's, that's, that's what Nick how, did. Yeah, yeah, that was so yeah. smart. I'm like, oh, okay. oh, man, I'm going to be bending my brain to make sure we get this exact right height. <laughs> or it's three quarters, like on the dot. Yeah. So you just take three quarters off the depth so it sticks up a little bit. And this is something else I need to play with them a little more is rolling things across it. Mm -hmm. well, That's a big thing. We've have got every 2,000 square feet of it right here. Yeah, so. It's really not that bad. Like even with the little rolling stool that has the tiny little casters, like it, it'll still go. Yeah, you can still scoot around. Okay. Okay. You know? The big issue is if you dump a bunch of crap all over it and you track it all over the place, like at a shop, like at the, like P we didn't put it in PSI. I mean, it was black. Like the gray was black in like a week. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're dumping stuff all over the place. You know, a bunch of employees walking around and they're tracking. And then yeah, they just drain cooling straight on the ground sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like I was steam cleaning. I got some cardboard. And luckily I have a cardboard dumpster out there filled with cardboard. But you take some cardboard and uh, you put it on the ground. And so, you don't. Know, you would do the same thing on epoxy. You do the same thing on your bare concrete. Yeah. So I think you do this. You leave bare concrete. Or you roll the dice on, on epoxy. You roll the dice on epoxy, I'm just you know telling you in Jacksonville you're gonna have a 25% mm, chance of success. Probably closer to 20. Remember, I would have the production builder do it, so that goes less. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're screwed. If the builder does it, forget it. I know. But, worst case scenario, you can just throw this on top of it later. I mean, you could. You're just wasting your three bucks a square. What are they going to charge you? Three bucks a square foot or so? Four bucks. Three ninety-five. Yeah. Yeah. So, four bucks a square foot. How many square feet is this garage? Eight sixty-three. Right. So you're thirty-two hundred bucks, thirty-three hundred bucks to do epoxy, and then another thirty-two hundred bucks to do flooring on top of the epoxy, because that's what you're going to end up doing. So you can spend it now or double later. So the Swiss tracks works out to about four dollars. Three ninety, three ninety-five a square foot. That's yeah. Let's Ship just do that. Eight. On your on the dot. I mean, worst case scenario, and you get to go out there and look at it. And I'll let you play with it all you want, and it's dirty as crap. If you, I'm gonna make you lay on your back and roll around a little bit, <laughs> and you'll see how dirty it is. <laughs> but it looks clean as can be. And look, you've heard me say this a thousand times. I freaking hate it. I don't want to like it. Mm -hmm. There just isn't any other option unless you're gonna buy porcelain tile, and you're gonna pay. It costs you as much as this freaking house. Yeah. You're gonna spend, you know, 25 grand to do like a legit an 800 square foot flooring to do like super legit porcelain tile. The thing that I hate about that too is one tile is uneven and I, I lose my mind. So and it will be okay. and it'll crack. And then the biggest part is our oak leaves in Florida. The little baby oak leaves, no matter where you live. The little oak leaves you sit in your driveway and they blow all the way to the back and you're gonna have it all the way back 30 feet all the way to the back of your garage yeah you're be sweeping it out same thing with epoxy you're gonna be sweeping it out or blowing it out and so every single weekend you're gonna spend the first hour and i know this because yeah. the first hour of your multi-hour process the first hour is cleaning your floor i did it that's that's the biggest thing that sticks out to me as a plus for swiss tracks it's just you know, even with how clean it when you want to, yeah, crazy it is here. It. Like it always looks 
good yeah. and you don't have to worry about track and stuff everywhere, like you know, dirt and dust. And there are going to be that. times where you're going to explode a transmission all over it and you're going to pull those 30 tiles out and you're going to put them on the driveway and you're going to you know, decrease them and then you're going to put them back in. It's going to take you three fine. hours. Yeah. Or if you're really finicky and you're starting to ball harder, then you just buy 30 new ones like I would. You just like, throw them away, put them on the curb, and buy 30 new ones and just start over. Just I haven't done stack, that yet out yeah. here. So that's the pitch. I don't care what you do, but I'm just telling you what I know. And I've been here. I've done this. I had a home just like this, not as big of a garage as this. And I one day woke up and said... I'm tired of the stains on the concrete that I've, you know, the stain here and the stain here and the stain there. Yeah. So I'm going to want to do epoxy. But I want to do clear epoxy because I want it to look like concrete. And it turned it like black. It looked terrible. And all the stains blew up and looked, looked awful. And then I'm like, well, shoot, now what do we do? I don't want those stupid chips. The chips are for my grandma. And so then I'm like, well, what can we do? He said, oh, I got this great idea. Let's do a metal epoxy system. You can make it look like any color metal you want. He showed me some pictures, and the pictures are always from 30 feet away. And then, so he did it, and then I could see every bug and every scrape and every time he dragged his little spiky feet. That's why the chips are so great, because the chips hide all that puke that's all over the darn floor. Okay. And so, you know, to do, but to do like the really legit, like polyaspartic or, you know, regular, regular epoxy chip system, you want to do heavy, heavy, heavy chips. So it doesn't look like chips. It just looks like that's the floor pattern. And people love that stuff. But then, you know, it turns brown on the light, you know, places that you drive on, especially in Florida with the humidity change all the time. Yeah. Um, so you just have to, there are pros, they're just like there are cons, the Swiss tracks, there are cons to the, the epoxy. So to do really proper epoxy, you know, you're probably closer to seven or eight bucks a square foot to do it right. And you still have a 20, you know, 20, maybe, maybe that bumps you up to 30% chance. And then you run the risk of it's, that's easily reversible at least. Right. So if I don't like it, you can pull it sell out it. and sell it. Yeah, you can yeah. sell it for 75%, you know, 25% off, well, you know, or in my case, you get 50% off and you get smoked. But I don't want to deal with the hassle. But that is, that is the thing where epoxy... There's no going back. No. You can't just come, they're going to come and diamond grind and ruin you and your neighbor's property by diamond grinding that crap. Dust everywhere. And figure out a way to put my cars for four days while they do it. Right. And you're going to spend more per square foot for them to do that than you are for them to, to, for them to get it off of there. And they'll, it'll never look the same than it would. And so what's going to happen is some guy's going to sit in front, he's going to bring all his little books and he's going to say, look, I understand everybody else is different. I'm, uh, you know, I'm special. What we're going to do is we're going to acid etch the floor and then we're going to diamond grind it down to the particulate and we're going to vacuum that all out and then we're going to bleach it and wash it again. It's all about prep, Devin. It's about the prep. Okay. So, yeah. so in, in it just depends. Now, if it works and you get, you're one of the 20%, that's great. It's good. You know, it'll get, it'll get a little brown, just like your Swiss tracks get a little beat up. But if I'm, I'm telling you, just knowing what I know and doing, have done, having done it all, uh, even we did a $90,000 floor up in you know, New Jersey, which is the most amazing floor ever, but that was 90000 To do this garage would be like nine, maybe ten to do proper porcelain tile. But you still have the issue of all those freaking oak leaves blowing in the back. And Spanish the sand, moss, too, because we're close to the beach. Sand, yep. yeah. The sand will disappear under here. And then people are like, oh, what about the dirt under it? Who cares? It's under the floor. And it's not going to like come back up. Right, and you just vacuum it whenever you want. So think about three quarters inch thick of dirt. You'd have to get a wheelbarrow full of sand and just start spreading it around. <laughs> and you could probably still take a whole wheelbarrow and get it underneath the oh, floor. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. in this big of a garage. Anyway, that's the... Forget the sales pitch. I don't give a crap what you, whether you buy $3,000 a floor or not, I don't freaking care. It's not going to make or break my life. I'm just telling you what I know. So okay. you can do the Arctic, the white that we did in Charles' garage looked really sick. I've been thinking about doing this next door of doing a white border. The other thing you're going to run into in this funky garage, if you try to do like individual parking borders, you're going to drive yourself crazy. It's just not going to line up right. Yeah. So you just do try. one exterior border? Or? I would, yeah. yeah. So I would just carry a border, white, black, blue, 
purple, whatever you freaking want. You know, if I have any say in it, I would say don't do any funky colors. Stick with some boring grays and, and whites and, and silvers and stuff like that. But I think my favorite combo is, again, it's not my garage, but I'll just shame you into doing it what I think you should do. This is what I do with Michelle. This is why people don't like me. So you'll just carry you'll just carry the border. Oh, I forget. I keep forgetting I can do this. Just drag it. And forget what the border looks like here. You'll make it symmetrical in person. Yeah. But you do now, something. Now have you like gotten that. any feedback on the white? As far as I know you mentioned earlier you didn't put in precision because of the mm -hmm. the oil and the grease. Is it yeah, um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it really matters because black shows more than white does. It's just like a white car, black yeah. black floor. So white or black, or you know, you can you, know, you can go out and dig into the black here a little bit. The black kind of gets a little grayish when it's when it's dirty. Like we need to mop ours. I mean, it still has drywall dust on it from when we did the drywall. We've never done anything to it other than vacuum it twice in the last two years. Um, so. You would lay this out symmetrically, like again here you would kind of cut these so it was somewhat symmetrical, but even here you'll see out here it's not symmetrical. Um, Probably only but you're gonna have, the tile width. You're going to have yeah. some cabinets and stuff in here anyway, Correct. so you're going to have to play with... So the, you'll play, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you start to float water. the floor, you know, it'll all be floating and you may have, you may cut both tiles or not and you'll be taking all of these walls into consideration and try to get it, you know, float it. So you'll have these all laid out with all the edge pieces not connected. And then at the end, then you'll kind of push the floor one way or another and figure out where you're going to cut it in order to get it as symmetrical as possible. So generally, this is how I would do it. Now, with that tandem garage area being mm -hmm. mostly cabinets or some kind of workspace, would you do the rubber tracks instead there? Um, no. You can only do rubber tracks up against the edge because you can't drive on them. Well, on the, the... Oh, back here? Yeah. Yeah, you could. Uh, just know they only come in black. So um, that's what we did in Doug's garage. We did all black back here, all rubber. So you could do like you could do all rubber next to the cabinets, and then just maybe change the pattern to the one large square or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to do a lot of rubber, you know, it might make sense to do um, you know a black border. But yeah, I mean, you could do something like this, or this is all rubber back here. Make it look like an Oreo. <laughs> so you'll have to sit down and think about colors. Um, there's pearl gray, uh, there's pearl gray and pearl silver. The pearls have a little bit more of a sheen, where the slate gray is a matte, you know, type finish. The white has a, is, doesn't have a sheen, it's more of a matte, and same thing with the black. So the pearl colors, when you look at the, the different, uh, there's uh, these pearl gray and pearl silver, they have a sheen. All the rest of them have a matte finish. We can do some turf green in there. Orange. You could go ahead and just get the turf tracks. Yeah, and there just you go. do turf in there. <laughs> so, but from a dollar perspective, let's just get you an idea of what this what this looks like. So, uh, rubber tracks is uh, like eight twenty five a tile. Where these are, so it's four ninety five a square foot. Where uh, the rib tracks is three ninety five a square foot. Okay, so a dollar difference per square foot. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So if you you put another hundred square feet or so. Uh, then you're, you know, you can get an idea of what it costs. And then you're gonna need some edge pieces. So edges are three bucks a piece. So you would do slate gray. So these would be for your door openings. So we're looking at, so you're going to need about 360, I always like to round up. You might want to put some in your cabinets. You're going to cut a few of them backwards, um, which you may not be able to repurpose to the other side. You're going to cut a few short, you know, especially a garage this big, you'll, you'll, you'll mess up a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably want to do 100 white and like 65 
of this. So we need, just to give you an idea price wise. Actually, let's do this just to make it simple here. So you don't need any corner pieces. I like looped edges. So there are looped and pegged. So this, this is dependent on where you start the floor. So, or, or how you start the floor. So if we do looped pieces, then we have to do a pegged end because you're gonna set it up on the garage door. So we start on the garage door here, here and work our way back. Uh, and so I just think looped pieces are a little more sturdy, uh, the edge pieces. And so pegged, so loop just has little circles and then pegged yeah. are just like the things that go into the, into, the, into the loops. So it really doesn't matter. It's just, I like these a little better. I think they're a little sturdier. So we'll start that way. So we need that. We need just in this example. And again, the price is the same no matter what color you do. So whether you do white or black, that's something you can kind of think through. And we need slate gray. And then we need rubber tracks. So you're not gonna want, if especially if we do the taller cabinets, you're not gonna wanna put the cabinets on rubber tracks. So that's why it still makes sense to have it set up or you have a row of plastic tiles and then your rubber will kind of butt up as close to it as you can get Okay. because you don't want to put heavy cabinets you know especially if you're putting jack stands and stuff like that because the cabinets are going to have a couple thousand pounds worth of weight to um, so we'd want to set it up where the rubber tracks gets as close to where you walk up to a cabinet so if we end up doing some cabinets where you have some countertop space um, so this is probably a good amount of what you would need. You know, we don't have to be exact here because you're going to lay it out in person. But this mm -hmm. is probably a good idea of the amount of tiles that you would need. And then that's why we round up a little bit. So basically this is just for cost estimation. Correct. Or anything. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we need, how many inch pieces did we need? Um, uh, we need uh, 19, so we probably actually need 20. And then you so could just make 16, the, so the rib 16, tracks, 8. the plastic ones in that back area where that are underneath the cabinets, just make those black 16, so or four, something. And like you can't, yeah. yeah, you can't hardly tell the difference, like yeah, looking so at 20. them. How many white did I say we needed? 100. Oops. 100 white. <coughs> we needed 360. Yeah, 360 slate gray. And then we needed 65. The only thing that stinks for you is you're going to have to pay tax. Unless you got some sort of reseller certificate. See, or send it to um, Georgia and go pick it up or something. Yeah. And it's not worth the 270 bucks. So you're 4,000 bucks. So the tile is normally 20% higher than that. Uh, and then normally, I mean, shipping this is gonna be like 400 it's bucks. Good. 30 boxes. Yeah. So, yeah. 450, so I eat the shipping. And so we get 20% off of retail, and then I pay for the shipping is the way, way it goes. Okay. So that's, that's what we're looking at, you know, about 4,000 bucks for to do flooring. So How much is the uh, the tile cutter? Because if I'm doing that much I floor. You just come borrow mine, yeah. You just have to drive here and drive back. Or, I mean, I would be too lazy to get the floor tile to, to drive all the way here and get mine. Uh, is, I think I, I don't think anybody has it. I think I have it upstairs. I haven't seen it. Did somebody borrow that? I don't know. Oh, it's at my house, yeah. Um, I would just rent the table saw from Home Depot. Okay. You, you'll need maybe five hours tops of a table saw. Because you'll lay it all out. That'll take you an hour and a half. And then you'll probably have five hours of cuts. So you go rent it from Home Depot for 40 bucks. Basically have everything ready and go get it. Finish out the floor with the edge Sometimes some stuff. Home Depots have floor tile cutters, like carpet tile cutters, but usually they don't. I'm telling you, I mean, it, it's it, to drive, you know, you're two and a half hours away to drive five hours for a floor tile cutter. I wouldn't do it. I just cut yeah. it with a darn table saw. It's not that much. It's not going to save you. It's not going to save you five hours to have a floor tile cutter for no. darn sure. It's going to save you maybe 30 minutes over a, over a, um, 
a, uh, a table saw. And a lot of times you need a table saw because you're going to have some little corners you're going to have to cut around. So Might as well just run it anyways. I, yeah. That's what I would do. But I bet you could probably find a floor tile cutter. So that's flooring. That's the skinny on flooring. You can kind of think through that. You can see we can quote it out and get it shipped and Kyle can put that together in minutes. Okay, you know? good. So flooring, um, let's go back to, so we talked about lifts. So you saw, and you can kind of do lifts on uh, as, as time goes on. My guess, to cut the floor, reinforce it, pour it, I'm thinking you're probably three grand, three to 4,000 for a concrete guy to do that after okay. the fact. Um, you're also going to have to cut for your scissor lift as well. Or you mean, yeah. get those big plates and hope. I'll probably do the plates. Yeah, and hope. Adams is holding up. So, But yeah, the big plates that we ended up doing, which you don't see in the picture, you know, we ended up doing those big reinforcement. They're like a, like a triangle that stick out the side that add reinforcement. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. So it just spreads the weight out. Yeah, I think they were okay. like 200 bucks. I haven't seen those. It's in the, I don't know if we ever ended up doing videos on that. But yeah, so he has a, there's a big plate that sticks out the back here that we Yeah, I remember seeing in. it in the video, yeah. So, you know, your lift is 2,500 bucks. <coughs> 2,368 for that. And then a mid-rise Oops. I mean, if you recess it, I mean, I'd probably end up putting a full in there. You're not going to be able to go Why that high. Why do you high. say that? What, what would be your preference between the two? Well, the mid-rise only goes up to here, to this table. where the You might be able to bring it up to here, and that extra foot but and a half would difference. change your life. So for you know thirty, so for a thousand bucks, if you're gonna if you're gonna spend four grand to have somebody come and cut your floor, um, I don't know, man. I think I'd save up and wait and do. So you're thirty eight hundred bucks to do this versus. Now with, you were saying they'd had to cut a channel in it to basically make that end piece lay flat. Is it gonna be? Is there a way to get it 100% flat to where it won't have any issues driving yeah. over it? So here's how it works. So you're going to have a hole. You're going to have a basin. So they're going to cut the floor. So it's going to look like what we showed you where, you know, where it's going to look from the top. If you're looking from the top, you're going to have a hole. They're going to have to cut a hole here and re-pour like a PVC pipe. So PVC pipe is going to go through the center here and you're going to have another hole. So this is what it's going to look like from the aerial view, and then your lift is going to sit in there. And then have another hole for the conduit to the control box. Yeah, and you're going to have like a, some sort of hole here that they're going to cut out and re-pour. This is why Swiss tracks would be so nice, because you're never going to be able to make that look good again. It's going to look like you cut a hole in the floor, and then this is going to be a different concrete than, than, that, yeah. you know, than, than that. It'll be a different color, no matter what you do. So if we're looking at it from the side, you're gonna have a basin that looks like this. So the main part of the lift is gonna sit in like this. And then the feet will kinda of lay, I know I didn't draw it to scale here, but the, the feet are gonna kinda of lay like this. So this is flat. Right, so this is just flat all the way across, so you drive right over it. But you need this angle pour it. So again, this was the basin here that was poured. And then it's just sitting on Swiss tracks underneath it to level with the floor. Correct. Okay. So you just need this angle. See, normally you would just pour a square hole. Right, you pour yeah. a square hole and you put the lift, you lay it down in there. You know, it just sits like this. But the problem is then it's too short. Then your your five series is out here. Your jack points are out here. And what the heck do you do? And you can't just jack it up in the middle of the car because you'll hit the body panels, right? Mm -hmm. And so you need the lift extensions. And I'll show you my M5 out there, what I'm talking about. You need the lift extensions in order to, so these extensions are important in order to be able to hit the jack points on any you know five series or bigger. 
And there's so, no way to remove them and just let it sit down in there when it's not being used? I mean, there you can, but I mean, you're talking a big giant piece of steel pin you're going to have oh, to hammer no. in every time and pull snap rings off and all of that. And so what you do is, again, they just pour an angle like this. And then they set the lift down in. So this is the main bulk part of the lift. Sits down in there. And then the feet kind of sit where, it, where it's flush. And so from your vantage point, these are sitting flush. Wait, let me think about how the angle, so I'm not drawing it right, because it would be a little bit lower. It'd be, it'd be, this wouldn't come all the way up. So actually, it would be like this. Right, I mean, basically looking at the lifts, you know, you're gonna inset it into the ground, this piece to be able to get it up flat with the top of the lift, you're gonna to have to have this end over here just not as deep, okay. more or less, because the you know they hang off, and then they'll so they'll they'll hit the concrete and yeah. then spread out, spread so, out. Yeah, so it's actually kind of fill in the space. Yeah, it's actually so those aren't more. locked in place when it's going no. down. No. Okay. Yeah, and then as it lifts up, they droop down or lock. Well, you can kind of see here how they're they're hanging a little bit lower. And if you need to use them, you just raise it up a little bit and lock them in place. Right, because on a smaller car, you don't want them to, then you can't get, you won't, if you have a small, like a, you know, any three series or smaller, if they're locked in place, then you can't lift the car up. So otherwise, you know, because normally, otherwise you could just, you know, you could just pour it square and just pour it oversized and have the whole thing. So have like things locked in place, and then you have the bulk of the lift. But the problem is if they're locked in place, then you can't get a small car on there. Yeah. And then you have, to, the you have to lift it up, unlock it, put it down, but then you can't drive the car because then there's, if, this, if it's put down here, then you got a big hole and you're trying to drive your little lowered car and you got this big bump you're going down into. So the way they do it is they just kind of graduate up at an angle. And since they're pouring the concrete anyway, it's not a big deal. You can do whatever you want, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that's the convoluted explanation of how that works. But uh, uh, the, so the mid-rise lift goes up. And what was the height of this thing? How high did this thing go up? Uh, lifting height max is 39 inches. So if, if nine and a half so if a car seat. is like an M3 is 54 inches tall, plus 40 inches, so that's 94 inches. Your ceiling height is uh, what 96, uh, 102 inches. So I guess yeah, maybe a mid-rise is all you need. Did I do that right? No. What What are your ceiling height? Nine foot six. Yeah, I'm not enough. Not enough. Okay. Oh wait, no, I'm not right on that. Nine foot five. Yeah. 114. 114. Yeah. So you're gonna so 14 inches. Right, so you've got you've got another 20 inches left of delta. That's worth it. Yeah. So all you do is you get the full rise. So the difference in price is 2,500 versus what was it 3,800? Mm -hmm. So it's thirteen hundred dollar difference, and all you do is we set. The, I'll show you outside there, but we just set the limit switch on your full rise at whatever our maximum height is for your you know maximum car, and it just won't go any. It'll stop before you get there. Okay. The only advantage of this one is we don't have to get compressed air to it. But I'm going to do that anyways. So. All right. So let's talk about positioning. Because what you need to know is where to put power and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so if this lift is here, you're going to want to be as close as humanly possible. So you're going to want the control box here. Let's just use this thing as our example. Get out of here. So you got the control there. 
The twin bush low rise didn't need air. You know, it just had pull. You just pull the blocks. Mm -hmm. So this is where it'd be simple. If we're doing an air compressor, we're going to do Prevost lines. And you're going to run the lines wherever you need to run them to, and we just run the line to there. So that, that's pretty simple. Um, so you would have likely cut the concrete here, and you'd run the hydraulic line this way. So how much room does that leave me for a cabinet with the control box? Well, the control box is a lot smaller than this thing, so... So you're planning on putting a cabinet on that that back wall? I'd like to, honestly. And that, that door is... That's where the door is going to be? Is on that, yeah. That wall. I mean, so the control box is... We'll have to go out and measure it. Okay. We'll measure that for me. One... Um, how far it sticks out, basically? Width uh, and width, foot, yeah, footprint. Yeah. All right, so where we have it from the wall, we're basically 13 and 3 quarters, more or less. And then this way, we're at 16, technically, 15 and 3 quarters, so 15 and 3 quarters and 13 if you actually measure the unit itself. 15 and 15 and 3 quarters. Height. And 43 high. 15 and 3 quarters, 13 and 43 high. So it's 15 and 3 quarters wide, 13 uh, yeah. deep, and it's 43 inches tall. We'll just use this speaker as our... Thirty inches tall. Forty-three. Oh, right. <laughs> That's close. I'm just throwing something. Out there. What's our width? Fifteen and three quarters. And thirteen. Okay, so that's our box. You're gonna need some room between the doorway, so that leaves us. Four feet, just 48 inches, which means we could fit one cabinet because they're 29.5 inches wide. What about doing? Or you could take yeah, actually do one cabinet going the other direction. Or you could just put your control box over here on this wall. put it down here like right here somewhere what about can you reverse it could you put it in like this corner or that corner yeah on the, in the, front the only corner? problem is is then you know because all your control stuff is here so that means you're gonna have to run you're gonna cut a much longer you want to make that path as short as possible you can't just flip the entire thing around to where it would all be at the other end or the front end well remember the lift it just depends on how you want to pull the car is the lift does have a pitch to it mm -hmm. so this if you want the if you want the front if you want to be able to pull in onto the lift otherwise you'd always want to be reversing onto the lift if you did it backwards it doesn't have to be yeah but but generally i think you're going to want to have the front of the car closer to where your tools and stuff are and if you can that's true yeah and where your you know polishers and all that stuff generally i mean I, at least I, I think in a perfect world that's what you'd want so i think you put the box the box really wouldn't be that big of a deal we'll just kind of put it over on the wall here not anywhere near where your door would be and that way you have a, you almost have a straight shot Basically, the only time it's in the way when you're parking two cars in there. Mm -hmm. And it's still, you can't get that close to the wall. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be able to get out the door anyway. You could pull right close to that with your bumper, you know. And just wind up to walk your butt around here. 
And again, stuff like this will make more sense. You don't need any special outlet. We just need an, an outlet. And you can put an outlet here and an outlet here. You're so gonna have those there ten. anyway. It's 110, just plug it into a wall. It doesn't need a dedicated circuit. Um, I thought it did in my original videos because they were talking about high magnetic breakers. It's because I had the freaking limit switches backwards is why it didn't work. Because I was trying to have it go up and it was hitting the li limit switch. So as soon as the limit switch broke because I had them backwards, it thought it was on the limit. Okay. So I was trying to get them better. It only draws yeah, like six the, amps. what uh, about the two posts? Is it also 110? Yeah. Okay. And it doesn't need a dedicator or anything like mm -hmm. that? No. Wow, that's even easier. Yeah, I mean, you can run them on your normal, you know, 15 amp circuit. What I'd probably do then is just, I'm gonna have an outlet in the ceiling for the garage door opener that's mm -hmm. not gonna be there if I use the other doors, just yeah. run that down. Well, that's exactly what we did with our Adams, you know, we yeah. just used the, we just patched, grabbed the garage door opener and just came off of that. Okay. So there has to be an outlet above that somewhere. Yeah. So if you move this box, then that gave us five foot seven or five foot nine. I think the one over to the left has a better picture. Yeah, five foot nine. And so five foot nine is how many? Five times 12. 69. Yeah, and so we could so fit two cabinets. Yeah, perfect. Yep. And we could still do uppers as long as I move the attic access, which I always put Correct. those in later. And it just depends. I find it hard to believe they're going to put it that close to the darn wall. Yeah, it'll probably end up being somewhere else. Because the uppers, it would be the lowers would be limiting. The lowers are, how deep are the sabers? They are 25? 20, 23.62. Okay, so we would need, <laughs> what the f <laughs> We would need two feet. I'm like ready to go, we'll throw it out. Yeah. Like, what homeless guy is here messing around? I'm sorry. <laughs> so you want to well, you know, keep an eye on or just try to convince him to uh, leave you a little space there. Yeah. I'm just going to grab my sabers from this. So you're going to do lowers and then uppers on that little, that little wall. Yeah, I don't know if kind of like drawers this, or this section what? more or less. Correct. It would just be polish, maybe some towels in the drawer would be cool. Yeah. And then... Always always do six drawers. I have learned my lesson on that in my wash bag. I had stupid four drawers and I wish I did six drawer cabinets. Even if you loaded them up with towels, you wouldn't do it? I, uh, I don't know. Because you have the two lowers that are... The two lower cabinets are... Um, are the same size. They're the big, the big drawers. So it's just the upper two drawers that change. And you get, yeah, you get four drawer, four regular size drawers. I don't know. That's just my suggestion, but you can do it either way. No, I, I, I think I, you know, I would suggest doing. So that'll that'll actually work out really well. So what does that look like inside of there right now? How much space are we looking at? Okay. And then your control panel's over there. I got a random, uh... And I could always... Yeah, I think that would work well. Okay. And the car's right up against the door, so that's how it would be parked normally? Yeah. Yeah, and then just pulled out. Yeah, so the car's... The only thing that, that worries me about having the control box right there mm -hmm. is that there's, there's not much space to walk. So when you've got groceries or, or right, whatever, right like you're going to be cutting it tight. I could always weigh the cost the of doing what you said and just putting it in that dead corner over there. Another, another thought, you know, depending on how, how many cabinets you do up here, is it, um, could you run it long enough to put it right here on this corner? Oh, yeah. And yeah. then just have, there your, you go. have your cabinets right next to it. And then you'd have, you'd have your control for the lift right next to, you know, your other cabinets for your tools yeah. and, and whatever else. Maybe even mount the polishers right above it or something like that yeah. and then just pull mm -hmm. them out. 
I've been yeah, meaning to ask to too. Um, I saw I was looking at the boom pole. They also make an air version, putting that above the the scissor lift, mm -hmm. and basically using pneumatic polishers most of the time. Yeah, we could do that. It's not that difficult. No, because you have attic access, so you can just come down to it. Yeah. And then boom poles are, you know, that an air boom is probably seven hundred bucks. Yeah. They don't make like an electric boom, do they? No. No. Because that's the other thing I thought about is putting, you know, you have reels mounted in your ceiling now. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me to position those. Lighting is going to be hard in this space. Getting everything to work with lighting mm -hmm. and not hitting a lift at the same time. Well, I think on the scissor lift, I think you just sacrificed that three and a half inches. To get the boom? To get proper lighting. Yeah. All right, so you've got those two there. And we've got more room here. So what are you thinking here? So I want to do, I don't know if I'm going to go with an S15 or the 12XD, but mm -hmm. some kind of Sonic toolbox there. Okay. And then you were going to do a Sabre Yeah, a big cabinet. cabinet. Like, a, like the wide. Whatever will fit. <clears throat> so I guess that'll decide which <clears throat> toolbox I go with, because that'll choose a lot of it. You're going to need to do an S9, S12, or S12 XD. Because these suck. Okay. You don't want any of these. What about the 15? Or, yeah, the 15 sucks. Really? What you about don't it? I don't like it. The, the drawers are just not good. Huh. So what you want to do is you want to do a MSS Plus and put wheels on it. And just put it next to it? This is the way to go right here. Like, if I have a choice, this sucker. 3,000 bucks. It's only 1,500 more than the other box, though. Yeah. Look at that beauty. And you can put whatever top you want, basically. Mm -hmm. Did you ever figure out anything on doing, like, a stained wood? Yeah. You were working on that? Yep. Yeah, so... Yeah, Mark, uh, Mark Hausman can get us for us, whatever we need. I have some samples out there you can look at. Okay. Or a big old hunk of wood on top of that sucker. And then mount a vise to the wood. Yeah. So, you know, to do that box, you know, it's still a lot less expensive than a snap-on hunk of garbage. Like, just absolute garbage. And then that way I can just fill it as I go. It's and the beauty of, yeah, well, the beauty of these, if you wanted to do Sonic tools, you have Sonic, these are foam inlay sized. That's what I would do. Yeah. So we put big old hefty casters on these. That's the one that can have the power strips in the drawers, right? Mm -hmm. It comes with it. Yeah. comes with it. Oh, that's the way to go then, you're right. It's beautiful. Can you ship your tools at the same go? Or does mm -hmm. it have to be yeah. shipped? Yeah, so yeah just they put them in the drawers, ahead. yeah. So this is, what's the, oh, Bryce, you lazy sack of crap. <laughs> he didn't convert it. Uh, you realize how many there are? Yeah, 1540 <laughs> divided by. You can do it if you want. Also, I might right. be able to fit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you have, what, like 11 feet of space there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you could fit you could fit a um, a lower, an upper, or just another another. Yeah, you know, you, you couldn't fit. Cabinet. Couldn't fit another wide cabinet, but no. So you could do something like that. You put a sink in there or something if you want. That's that would be perfect. That's another thing we got to pick is where the placement of the sink because I have I get to choose one pre plumb. I do it right there. Yeah. And you can butt your toolbox up right to it. Because Saber, you just cut a hole. You know, you just cut a hole in the top of the cabinet, right in the countertop. Just put an overhead drop yeah. in sink. Roll your box around wherever you need it to go. Boom. So now, what are we going to do back here? So we've got our air compressor here. The water heater's still going to go somewhere in this vicinity. So what are you going to want to do for cabinets here? You're going to want to do a bunch of closets. Do you have a bunch of crap? Towels more than anything. Towels and chemicals. 
I mean, you can store probably every tile and chemical you have in one of these. So right now I have... So you can't do four. I think... What about doing woers on the other side? I always wanted, I wanted to try to incorporate some kind of heavy duty workbench somewhere close to that left hand corner. That way if I have anything, like I need to set a transmission down on something, All right, I have right. storage for it, yeah. So yeah, I think doing an array of cabinets your closets on this side and just saying I ever wanted to how much width is that between there could I pull something like an ATV or a golf cart in there well, six, feet? six yeah yeah easily that's cool okay so yeah I mean you could fit as many cabinets you we could you could do six wide if you wanted to you know it would come down probably more to cost than anything over time yeah you tuck your compressor in the corner I think even if you had, I mean, even if you had to leave your water heater and stuff. You just move it down. Yeah, so even you could do like an opposing grouping. I think that would look really cool. Because, you know, the likelihood of you tearing all the stuff and redoing it like tomorrow is going to be unlikely low. So even if you left your water heater and kind of disappear behind the big closets, do that and put your pressure washer on the wall right here okay and then or in this cabinet depending on how the plumbing looks so we do your pressure washing system so let's just do another one of these just to be and then you'd have the di tanks actually that would be real yeah look so these are your di tanks so let's just call this your whole pressure washer system so di tank pressure washer above that right here and just prevos in between everything yeah and you would run off of the water softener that's not gonna i guess it's not gonna well the water softener is gonna run your whole house yeah so if you're getting water from inside the house then yeah so one of the initial thoughts we had with the builder was the outside loop for all the hose bibs and the irrigation is not going to be part of the softener system because right. it's outside the house it's going to be on its own water meter Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I'm not really going to be running thousands of gallons through the pressure washer every single month, so it's not that much cost, but it would save me on the sewer cost mm -hmm. if I tied it into that. But I'd rather leave it. If it's going to save me on DI, it works out better in the long run. You're just going to tee off of your water softening system right there that's feeding the whole house. So your main water line is going to be right there. Yeah. You just tee off of that. Your plumber will come and cut those and put a T, and then boom, right into your right into your uh, system. Your DI tank has bypass right on it. And then you could make this pretty, you could make, if you wanted to, you can make this the centerpiece of the whole darn garage, just put it right smack in the middle. And then I don't even have to worry about a hose reel because it's outside. So it's basically just the DI tank and then and the pressure, pressure washer. washer. In. And it's not like we have to have valves because like I said, the bypass is on it. If it's just direct right. plumb, that'd work. And since though, so lights, you're gonna want light here. So you're gonna want one, two, three lights right down the center of this thing. Just six bulb, just six three bulb, them, yeah. right smack in the middle, right? Okay. And then in this area, you're gonna want one, two, three, four, five. I think you know, I think you can get away with. You could probably just do two, two, four, six. Six fixtures here is going to be plenty. And just have them outside the lift area, mm -hmm. right Correct. outside of it. Yeah, right on the edge. One, two, three, and then run right down the middle here. Four, five, six, and then this one, one, two. That's it. And decide whether you're going to just deal with the fact that you're not going to have as so much light right overhead. Because in perfect world, you'd have one, two, three. Well, I do have one option in there is that I can choose to have them recess one fluorescent or two fluorescent feature or fixtures okay. wherever I want. There you so go. So have them recess at those. One, two. Yeah. And then Recessed. Just, and then just change the fixture later. 
Yeah, or I mean, it might be good to change the bulbs in the fixture, you know. Yeah. Okay. So now we just need to figure out, I guess, I mean, that should be plenty of cabinets, right? Yes. I can't see. Well, I mean, you've got... That's going to be a sink, so one, I'll lose that. Yeah, but you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lowers. Yeah. Normally, in a garage, I'm doing six. Of the, like, Adam LZ's, we did six. Okay. My old garage, I did six. So you'd have six plus the sink, you know. Mm -hmm. But then I'm normally only doing two of these, and you're going to have four of those, plus you're going to have a giant toolbox. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's plenty. plenty. <laughs> More cabinets than I've ever had. <coughs> it's perfect. You know. Left. Yeah, so okay, this so would be a single. This would be a single. You know, a double double worktop, one one piece, and then this would be two. Okay, but so I'll never have, have three cabinets somewhere. Okay, good. Right. Yeah, so you have a seam in the middle there. So just to give you a cost idea, so you'd have four of those, one of those for the sink, three of these. One of those, six of these, four of these. So we were at 4,004. And you can buy them, you know, one step yeah. at a time. But so we were, uh, so 12,439. Keep forgetting I have that keyboard. Clear. Minus four thousand four. So you have eighty five hundred bucks in cabinets plus another. Well, the beauty is the saber is going to be coming from Baltimore or somewhere in that neck of the woods. So we're talking about like for you probably thirty five percent less cost shipping. So instead of two grand on that, probably one thousand bucks in shipping. For so all the cabinets. Yeah, 9500 bucks or so. Sure. Now, this is just, you know, seeing the difference. If I wanted to do sonic cabinets throughout, what's my cost extra? Double, double it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A little less than double. Yes, yeah, so you'd be 16-ish. And the only advantage would be it fits the foam layouts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could fit the foams. You just have to, you'd have to put, cut some Kaizen foam around it, too. Which it in. actually kind of works because then you can you'll all have tools that won't fit. You know, they're, you just they're cut different. Out. You'll have channel locks and you'll have Weiss tin snips and, and other things like that that you're gonna have and tools you already have. There's gonna be a sale on craftsman tools here soon. You might wanna snap that up when I ask get rid of all mine. <laughs> Now, which pressure washer would you do for that distance and for that setup? Because yeah, do if we're doing it like too. that, you would just do that? It would mm -hmm. be able to keep up with it? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you do a 1322 on a shelf. Okay. And then, so, you know, because we're do, you'll probably be doing this piece by piece, I'm not going to just draw the whole quote, but you're like... So we got another 38 plus 28, so that's uh, th so that's uh, what six thousand bucks there. Mm -hmm. um, and then your pressure washing system, your hose rail is going to be another like roughly 2,500 bucks. So you're 8,500 plus your 12, so you're at 21. Um, your toolbox is going to be another four, let's say plus tools, uh, so probably six. So you're at uh, 27. Lighting's gonna be maybe eighteen hundred bucks, so you're at th roughly thirty. Uh, so you're, you're gonna be to do this garage from start to finish. You're you know thirty thirty thousand bucks roughly. Plus any install cost I have. Correct. So you know thirty thirty to forty thousand dollars long term is what you know what it's gonna add up to. You can do you know piece by piece. Now this isn't really a question for you, but. Um, I was thinking about doing a, you know, do-it-yourself mini split. Mm -hmm. Where would you put it? Um, you'd probably put it on this wall here. Yeah, you really? can't put it anywhere over here. Mm -mm. You could put it either here 
or here, I would want to put it as close to my work area as possible. So I put it right smack here, either there or there. You, you can put it up the high. Toolbox, yeah. Yeah. So you can put it up high. Yeah, I was just basically weighing the options between doing it myself or paying someone to do a cassette mm -hmm. in the middle of the garage. Mm -hmm. Still a mini split, but just a you know, different way to distribute it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I think a mini split right here, because then you'll blow out All this way. way. Right, you're gonna have insulated it'll doors. Into, mm -hmm. It'll filter into this area, or you know, you can even get a fan. You know, um, if you're mini splitted, I would, you know, because you only have you know nine foot, nine and a half foot ceiling. I'd probably avoid fans. Fans are gonna mess up your lights. You're gonna have to do. You can't do light. Can't do a fan Next below a light, light. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're gonna have shadow, crazy shadows. Okay. I think that's it. I would love to, I mean, I think it'd be sick to do like a centerpiece, just have your pressure washer mounted on the shelf, right there. Get your DI tanks, get some nice looking copper, you know, pro press fittings or something like that. And kind of make this just look real industrial. Mm -hmm. You have your you have air your compressor, compressor here. Yeah. So you, this is where you need 220. So 25 amp, 220. And then power, power, power. Maybe power in one of the cabinets or something like power. that? Power. Well, as long as closets. you get power somewhere near there, then you can get it wherever you need to get it. Okay. Because you don't have block. So if they put the outlet here, you just... Run it up, yeah. Like we did with Kyle's desk out there, we just cut a hole and moved it, you know, ran a line. It's so simple to do. So I wouldn't nit I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would try to get power here, just in case. It'd be nice to have it there. Maybe put a vacuum system or something like that there. Yeah. Obviously, power along this wall. Power here. Power here. Power along this wall. All right. If you can sneak one in here, that's the one they would never think to put. So if you can put one there. And then boom, boom, boom. I would do counter height on this wall. So do counter height. And I would do normal height over here. And then just move it if I want it. I'd do a dedicated. So again, you're gonna have a dedicated 230 or 220 volt, 30 amp here. And then over here, you're gonna have a dedicated 20 amp. And maybe just to be safe, make them do dedicated for the overhead doors or the overhead garage door opener for the lift just to be safe oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so these two so you'd have uh you'd have these on a on a circuit garage doors on a circuit you'd have i'd have two circuits for the wall outlets in here so two 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 two, two fifteen amp. amps so two dedicated fifteen or two twenty amps if you can convince them so mm -hmm. twenty amp for the left side twenty amp for the right side you're gonna want, uh, so how many light fixtures did we say? So there's six, seven, six, there. eight, 11, plus your other two. So we were at 13 fixtures. Um, each fixture is, I think, at 1.2 amps. I would want one circuit, two circuits, three circuits. So three switches. You just have them as soon as you walk in on that door. Yeah. yeah. Depending on if you do roll-ups or not, four circuits. So I'd want these on actually, or switches. It doesn't have to be circuit, but switches. And the electrician will know if I'm, you're gonna do, so the lighting fixtures are, I think they're 1.2 amps. Now, would I, do you think it'd be worthwhile to have them try to pre-wire where each light goes, or how do you yes. wire that? How did you wire it? It's just a stub. There's just a wire hanging out the ceiling. Okay. So they would put a box. Yeah. But you just need a bare wire. Yeah, 1.2 amps per fixture. So just add it up. So if we have 13 fixtures, that's uh, 13 plus... So you'd need at least two breakers for your lights. Minimum, yeah. The more power, the better. 
you'll have this video you can go back and rewatch. But does that make sense? For yeah, you, it for does. The power for the compressor, so two two twenty thirty About amp. The dryer would that need its own? What is that's one ten, right? Yeah, the dryer. Yeah, so it's yeah. Easy. yeah Just it put one draws there. like four amps or something like that. This dedicated twenty. Um, and then you're gonna have, I would say, one twenty amp on this wall, one twenty amp on that wall, and then you're gonna have at least two fifteen amps. You're gonna have two fifteen amp lighting circuits. Then you'll have another fifteen amp circuit for your lifts. Your garage doors will have their own breaker, and then you would want, you know, you would want at least one, two, three switches for your lighting. Your zones, okay. But three switches, but at least two breakers, two 15 amp breakers. Okay. And then after the fact, you're gonna put a hose reel, so garden hose. Bib will be there. Yeah. What you'll find though is that if you, if you, um, do a bucket filler, you'll have no need for a garden hose here. So the only good need for a garden hose is gonna be to work on the yard. Which they'll be on the right side of that third car right. anyway. So. so I wouldn't worry about having a lower hose bib or worry about putting like an Ely, you know, like putting a garden hose out here. We will never use it. I got one on a wash bay, used it never. So I've got, it's got it out there. Never ever use it because I got a bucket filler. Yeah. Once you have a bucket filler and a pressure washer on demand, you'll never touch yeah, it. Yeah, there's no need. So you do a Mossmatic stainless wand holder out here, a Cox hose reel. Hopefully I'll have them in gray by the time you're ready. Gray or like, a, you know, a, a color that isn't bright blue. Uh, and then... Come steal me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's great. And then when I'm ready, if I build a carport, just mm -hmm. change the direction of the hose, make it go to a yeah. boom pole. Yeah, bingo. And you probably leave this here. You would just put a, a valve out here, I'll or a, you know, or a second pressure washer. You know, you can't run two. You'd have to put a valve to you know divert. Yeah, because it, it you'd lose too much pressure if you tried to pressurize two lines. It's basically, one hundred and fifty foot run if you did it like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, can't do pressure. Yeah, when you have two two lines on a little pressure washer like that, it's just not going to work. I'm working on, and, and depending on when you do this, but I'm working on a design of the 1322, which will be a like a, a three gallon per minute 20 amp. That would be great. For probably about 2200 instead of 950, so about a little more than double the cost is likely what it'll be of the nine of the of the 1322, but it'll have total stop played on off it's just as quiet but to get like three gallons a minute at you know at thousand psi so basically just drop the pressure increase the flow change the pump design mm -hmm. it's the same motor same size no, factor no, no much much bigger motor so it's a, an 18 millimeter motor instead of a 14 so the pistons are 18 millimeters instead of the little 14s and they're longer so the motor has a different wobble completely different windings so the 1322 is designed to run on a 15 amp circuit, so this would be a 20 amp dedicated. Version. Which we'd already put in there anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. so you'd be ready to plug it in. And then we'd get you know three gallons a minute for two grand, instead of three gallons a minute at four grand, which is what exists now. The problem with the one that exists now is it's really, really loud. It would shake their whole house. Oh yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, I'm working on it. I don't know if they're gonna do it for me, but we're working on it. Let's try. So this is how we do, this is how I do design. This is why when people email me, I have to sit here and think through this stuff. So there's, there's we're just kind of fumbling through, just talking it out. And so when I'm doing this remotely, I'm doing this back and forth and back and forth with people. And so this is why I ask for people to pay me retail price because I put in the extra effort. I mean, I've done this with hundreds of people. Or on a weekend, I sit on my, you know, on my couch and I'm doing this. You know, luckily you laid it out for me on Home Designer, so I didn't have to do that. And then now, hopefully, I'll sell you thirty-five thousand bucks worth of stuff over the course of the next several years. And and uh, and you know, some people just write the check, you know, at once, and other people kind of take their time to work their way through it. And uh, but this is the kind of service that I want to be able to provide to people to teach how to 
how to design. Eventually, Kyle will be doing all the work, and I'll just kind of take the credit. <laughs> so that's there the you goal. go. That's the goal. So thanks for coming down. But I, this is, I think this is going to look great. It's going to look pretty sweet. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. And you'll have a nice, you know, not too much crap going on. You'll be able to fit most of your crap back here in these things. And you'll have the attic as well. That's where the attic and putting attic ladder in will be so beneficial. And you put all the stuff that you don't use. You know, I have a two month roll. If I have use it two months, it goes in the freaking attic. If I, you know, if I don't throw it away. And then so. you'll get it on the third month, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I'm gonna, it's going to sit downstairs for two months, and then I put it up there, and then I need it the next day. It's usually yeah. the way it goes. Uh, but, yeah, if you do a mini split in this thing, that's another thing. So, yeah, all in, if you do this division we have, you know, you're going to be around 40000 bucks to do it. If you do 5000 bucks a year for the next eight years, eight years of your life, you'll be there. You know? Hopefully a little faster. Yeah. yeah. It makes some more money. Anyway, that's what, uh, this is what we do. Thanks for watching and uh, more garage designs I think coming in the future.